So your kid is a picky eater and you're wondering if it possibly could be sensory related, today's video is just for you. I made a video about sensory related picky eating a couple of years ago and it's actually one of my most watched videos. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a refresh on some of that information because I know this is such a big question for parents. I want us to kind of look at picky eating in, in two ways. The first one is this normal progression of learning to eat, which I'll children experience which is completely developmentally appropriate and it's something that we just need to plow onto like keep exposing them and keep giving them new types of foods to try and to have levels of exposure to and the second one is where we are genuinely concerned that we have a picky eater that the amount of food that our child is eating is significantly less even according to their developmental age and stage now let's kind of divide those brackets up the first one where we're saying this is probably developmentally appropriate and we just need to keep exposing children. We are noticing that there may be foods that they like and these are probably the very familiar foods. It might also be that you're noticing that they're eating less but they're still growing, they're still developing as usual and this is often related with the, the kind of change over from the baby years to the toddler years because when our babies are young they are growing rapidly so they need a lot of food. I I mean, if you were ever needing to bottle feed or nurse your baby, you know, it's like you are on a schedule. You need to keep getting food into that little body. Whereas when they become toddlers, they are able to sustain their growth and their development on less and in less frequency. So they're not needing to eat every hour and a half and they're able to have those meals and perhaps a snack, some snacks in between. Um, but even in the meals, and this often happens at dinner time, from, I hear from parents that they eat kind of normally throughout the day, but at dinner time they eat very less. That we would say this is part of development or this is part of being overtired. And that is less about picky eating than it is just about your child learning to eat. So here we want to make sure that we are exposing our children to lots of different textures of food. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that they have to eat it. We're not trying to force them to eat anything necessarily but we are putting it on the table or on their plate. We are consistently exposing our child to a lot of different types of food, different colors, different textures. And if your child is in the stage and you are wanting to encourage this just exposure, I have some cards and um, some printable cards linked below, which basically walk you through the what each of our different fruits and vegetables do for our bodies. My children love these. They are like constantly asking, mom, can we have carrots? We want our eyes to be able to see in the dark which they've learned from these cards or asking me what does spinach do and then they'll eat the spinach so if that's something that sounds like your child would benefit from those are linked below you can come and grab them on the other hand if you are noticing that your child has a very limited amount of food that they eat and this isn't something that seems to have changed when they changed over from being a baby to a toddler this has been from day one where you started introducing foods that there's just been a struggle this is something we'll consider in different areas. I've got a blog post also linked below, which is all about the different reasons that children may be sensitive to food or more towards a picky eater. Um, it also will give you an idea of kind of, is this severe picky eating or is this something that is more, more minor? I have a blog post, which I'll link below, which will really give you a breakdown on the different reasons that a child could be a picky eater like what is inspiring the picky eating. It will also give you a nice breakdown of kind of understanding whether your child is a severe picky eater or whether it's something more minor, which will really help you make decisions moving forward about how you can support them. I would like to say though, you don't want to overlook this, right? If you're pretty sure that this is not just the developmental component and you're pretty sure this is actual picky eating, start now the the younger we start in all of these types of things with development the better we're going to be able to support them as their brains are developing and as their taste buds are maturing so the first thing that we want to understand is if this is sensory related picky eating, what is sensory anyway? We know that we have eight different sensory systems, but specifically when it comes to taste, uh, well, eating, we're talking about taste, right? And often smell is also re related to that. Um, and there's also the texture of the different foods. So we know that there is a spectrum of what we would consider a typical sensory experience. Now, if you can think of, for example, a cucumber, this is one of the foods that lots of people don't like. That would 
would be considered within the spectrum, right? Because you don't eat cucumber, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a picky eater. You might eat a whole array of different green vegetables, but cucumber, specifically the texture you don't like. So it's the same, for example, of going to the beach. You know, some people love the feeling of sand in between their toes and other people really, really dislike it. And all of these we would consider somewhat typical, right? We might be on the, the side where we are more open to walking on the beach, trying different textures, you know, eating all the slimy kind of foods. And we might be on the side where we avoid certain foods, but generally we eat okay. And we maybe don't love going to the beach, but, you know, we're fine with socks and shoes and that's not an issue that prevents our daily functioning. When we are looking at something that actually pre prevents this normal progression of development or daily functioning, that's when we're considering outside of the spectrum. So if a child is saying, I, it's not just that I'm not eating cucumber or trying that new vegetable or something like that, they're saying absolutely zero vegetables all the time, or they are you know, completely cutting out certain food groups, or they have a very, very specific requirement on the food that they eat, like they only eat um, this shape of chicken nuggets, or they only eat uh, if it's cut in the certain way or the certain person provides it or makes it, that's when we're starting to say, okay, this could be sensory related and this is something that we may be needing to get some support on from a trained professional, whether it's a speech therapist or an occupational therapist or a feeding specialist, basically, is what we're looking for. Unfortunately, when it comes to the world of sensory development, our children don't necessarily come to us and say, listen, I appreciate that you made all of these beautiful vegetables, but they feel like slugs on my tongue, so I'm not gonna eat them. What they do say is they throw their plate, right? They throw their plate or they just refuse to eat. They get up and down from the table constantly. They do all kinds of things without really saying to you why they are doing them. This might also be in behavior that is very, uh, very rigid. So they'll say, like I said, only that one type of chicken nugget. Oh, it has to be that type of chicken nugget. It has to be cooked for 35 seconds in the microwave exactly. And they won't eat it if anything goes out of that spectrum. So these kind of behaviors are showing us that there's something within food that our child is wanting to have extreme control over because the idea of it being different is very, very scary for them. And in terms of them like avoiding eating, getting up from the table, throwing food, again, this is showing us that there's something within the process of eating. Of course, there's a stage where children throw and I have a video that I'll link above about that but th this is beyond that right this is not just a stage this is something that is you can generally see is like actually causing your child stress for a lot of children that I've worked with that are picky eaters I am often you know very close to them during the the time of presenting new food or even just cooking food and you can feel the actual change in their body when they need to come to the table often their hearts are racing their breathing changes it's very stressful for them actually so in terms of when to seek support, there are many online programs and I'll link a couple below that are fantastic for supporting picky eaters. But I think that you want to kind of look for support when you feel that you are unable to get them to try new things or eat out of their very, very specific menu. This might sound like, oh, well, isn't it too soon? Like, shouldn't we wait till they're actually their weight is dropping or anything like that? I think this is something that you should, you know, not try to, to overlook. If you're feeling that you are needing to feed your two or three year old still formula because they're not getting enough food into their body, then definitely it's time to kind of be looking at what kind of supports you can be getting. These might be in the form of in-therapy programs and these might be in the form of just education and empowerment for you as the parent. So as I said, I'll link some of the programs or one specific program that I really would recommend below. But I wanna give you today five ideas that you can get started with if you're feeling like your child's picky eating is sensory related that may help get the, the process of learning to eat and learning to eat more of a variety started. So the first one is cooking together. 
Cooking is a great way to introduce new foods because the stakes are much lower, right? This isn't necessarily that your child needs to eat the food. It's actually not even on their plate and it's not at the, the table or wherever you normally eat. It's in the kitchen and maybe they're just washing something. Maybe they are cutting sausages for you or they are, you know, breaking up the lettuce. And this is something that they're not necessarily having to eat and you can have a dry cloth next to them on whatever they may be touching so that they can dry off their hands as well. This is great for just getting that first kind of exposure. The other thing is to have as much as possible variety on the table. Now, it might be that your child, you know, is eating plain pasta. Like you, you know in your head that that's what they're gonna be eating for dinner. But bring a, a bowl of the sauce and put it on the table. Maybe your child will even agree that you can put it in, in a separate bowl and put it next to them. Just getting the visual and smell and sight exposure of different foods is something. It does count. This is one of the steps that we use in support picky eating. The next thing might sound a bit counterintuitive but it's basically to take the pressure off eating. It's very stressful as a parent to sit and watch your child either not eat or eat very small portions or or eat you know only one part of the whole meal that you've cooked but as I said like often what we do experience with picky eaters is they are very stressed in that time of eating so we want to kind of take the pressure off. This is not necessarily that they have to finish two beans before they can get off the table or any of those kind of tricks and rules that we put into place. We want the firstly that they're open to the experience of being at the table and eating. So try, especially in a season when you are working on sensory related picky eating, to take the pressure off of the food time. Then the next thing that is so critical to understand is that feeding and learning to eat is a process so if our child is for example pasta i know this is one that children love that pasta is the same thing that they eat for every single meal they know how consistent the pasta is they know that there are no changes in the texture we don't want to go from offering pasta for three meals a day to saying okay pasta's out the window we're now having tomato salad for lunch and we're going to have you know fish for dinner we want to kind of slowly integrate some of these different textures without necessarily taking away the food that they are able to eat so it might be from just having pasta to agreeing that some of the pasta has a little bit of a, a you know zata or like some kind of a sprinkle um, on it maybe parmesan if you are then taking a step up you might be saying okay could we put sauce on maybe the second round of pasta that you're eating and maybe it's sauce that they can dip that they don't necessarily have to have it on but we're wanting to slowly grade up the type of textures and the colors and, and smells of the things that we're offering. Now the fifth one is honestly one of the things that I think is the most overlooked area when it comes to picky eating and supporting our children in learning to eat and I have a video all about it linked on your screen now. Go and check it out and I will see you over there.